Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Chris Nichols here again from the camera store. And you know, when Jordan and I started TCS TV, we were, you know, working at a pretty basic production level. We really wanted to kind of step it up visually and start incorporating camera movement. So, you know, we looked at cranes, but of course they're quite large. Uh, dollies, same problem. And we did rock the slider on tripod quite a lot because that was portable. The thing with TCS TV is we're always on location like this. We're walking a lot, we're moving. We need something that's light and portable. Now, of course, glide cams did give us a very dynamic option, but they need to be constantly refloated. We're always changing lenses, always zooming. And so that became a real issue. Now, of course, that brings us to the gimbal. This is a huge change for our industry. Now, Movi came out with their product and it revolutionized things. Small cameras, very steady, very dynamic, and it can replace many different tools. Now, the only thing with the Movi is it is prohibitively expensive. That's one of the issues there. So now we're looking today at the DJI Ronin. We've been using this product quite a bit, and uh, we're really enjoying it, especially at the price point. So come with us today. We're going to take a look at this amazing product and see if it can really deliver. Now, of course, you're going to have to get your camera balanced properly on the Ronin, and thankfully, they've made that a very easy, simple affair. We basically got four points of contact here. You're going to unlock, slide to adjust, and then relock. It's a very straightforward process. But here's the best part. You can see that the Sony A7S here, it's not quite balanced, but that's okay. I turn on the Ronin, give it about three seconds, and this thing is going to auto calibrate. And there we go floated, the motors are accommodating for any sort of imbalance. This is a huge advantage over a glide cam. Keep in mind that you guys can get your setup, change lenses, refocus, and with slight weight changes, the Ronin is simply going to accommodate that for us. So it's a really nice, very simple, and very useful process. All right, so you've got three basic operator modes with the DJI Rowan, and first in an underslung grip like this. This is your standard mode, but you can reverse the grip upside down into an upright mode if that suits the shot better. You've also got their briefcase mode, which gets the camera very low to the ground. You can do some cool stunt bar kind of work with that. Now, there is a, a weird kind of thing here though. This does go hand in hand with the app system in order to set up things like briefcase mode and other settings but you can only use it on Windows computers or Apple iOS mobile devices. So very, very strange here. Now I'm sure they're going to incorporate more devices as time goes by, but right now it's a weird combination. Now, the other cool thing that you can do here is how we manage the movements on this uh, DJI Ronin. If I'm by myself, like you can see in the first shot that we did, I have to turn my arms and then the Ronin will adapt to that following the direction left to right. But if you have a friend, like Levi here, you can put it into multi-dual operator mode. Now he can then use this remote system and as you can see, pan and tilt the camera as desired. This is what we use for our store tour and it does give you maximum control. All right, so we've got the DJI Ronin rig here, it's still stripped down, no camera plate on it, but overall we're looking at just over nine pounds. Now, one of the great things about the DJI Ronin package is these high torque motors. Now we need that because we've got this auto calibration system, but it also gives us a very flexible payload range. Uh, you know, at its maximum, you can put about 16 pounds worth of camera and gear onto this rig. Now that means that cameras like the Epic, C100, C300 with lenses, all well within the range of this rig's usability. And of course, it's also great for cameras like the FS700, our personal favorite, as well as various DSLRs. Now you can also go lightweight. We've put GH4s on here, Sony A7Ss, and the only thing I'm gonna say about that is, if you go really light, you know, maybe using those with the small pancake lenses, you might actually have to add a little bit of ballast get, to get this rig to float it properly. But really, you've got a very versatile payload scale here. Now that means at its maximum, you might be hefting 25 pounds, that can be an issue, but we're going to show you guys that in just a bit. Now, when it comes to the fit and finish of the Ronin, we're actually very, very pleased, especially considering its price point. All the parts are lightweight, they fit very tightly, and everything seems machined well. We do have some issues, though. One of the first things you're going to find, bring an Allen key. The locks are good, but they do have a tendency to loosen. You're going to want to have to retighten those in the field, so make sure you've got that. The only other problem we have is with the main locking nut at the top. It's a dovetail. It does seem quite secure, but first off, the safety detente pin, you're never quite sure if it's clicked in place sometimes. So you're really relying on that one locking knob to hold it all in place. And it is a little bit fiddly. It's probably the only part that doesn't mesh in a nice, smooth fashion. Still, overall, especially with the price point, a solid product. 
Now, of course, in order to get the Ronin properly balanced, we need a stand, and of course, DJI has included it, which is a nice benefit here. I also like that there's no tools required. You can just set it up, and it is very lightweight aluminum, but sturdy. This is thoughtful too. The spigot attachment to put it onto the legs here also goes on to any sort of brass spigot that you'd find on studio stands and cranes. And so you can do things like take the arms here, put it onto a C stand or crane, and then just put the DJ on there and move it up on the crane. So a very nice feature set. We've got it there and it's easy to set up. Now, of course, an electronic stabilization system is going to need power, and the DJI Ronin is no exception. So we have this compact battery here. Looks a lot like what they use in their Phantoms, but it's not the same pack. Still, a lot of really good, thoughtful features. First, the locking system. You drop it in. There's no quick clips. There's no buttons that you have to push. You just drop it in, tighten down these screws. It's very secure, and it's very simple. Got a nice battery indicator here just to let you know how much juice you have left in the battery. That works well too. And when it comes to lifespan, the key feature, we're doing really well here. The DJI battery here, it gives you about four hours on average. Now we found with a lighter camera like an A7S, we actually could go beyond that. If you use a heavier camera or don't balance the camera right though, that is going to take more out of the motors and of course out of the battery. Still, it's lightweight, it's compact, and you get good life out of it. All right, so here's a neat trick, guys. You can stick this on a tree like we've got here or the incorporated stand that comes with it, and you now have yourself a remotely operated panning system. Look at that, just like a security camera. But you can do some neat follow shots. It's a very nice setup. All right, so we're gonna go for a little competition here. We're gonna go gimbal versus glide cam. Now, Levi's been adjusting his glide cam here for good, I don't know, 20 minutes, something like that, and he's still not quite there. And uh, that is one of the inherent issues with this thing. We're gonna try going through this playground. We're gonna go up these steps. We're gonna kind of do a pass off. We're gonna see what can happen. And again, if I were to do something like this, that just f***s it all up, doesn't it? All right, so let's analyze our little competition here. Now, first with the glide cam, I mean, it's a great device. It's a good price point, it's light and portable, and it actually did a fairly decent job. Where you get tough issues with the glide cam is things like techniques where you hand off to another operator. Things can get a little bit shaky. And you gotta remember that a glide cam is only as good as the operator using it. These things do take quite a bit of skill to master. Still, it's nice that you can point them very quickly and very logically with your own mind. Now, when we look at the uh, Ronin, you can see we get great stability here. It's very smooth, it's very nice in its tracking capability, and you can hand this thing off to other users and get a very seamless transition. In single operator mode though, it can be a little bit tricky to follow targets quick enough. And again, if you wanna change that speed, it's doable, but you gotta use the app or the computer. Hey guys, it's Jordan, the video guy, and I thought I'd give you my perspective actually using the Ronin on a couple of TCS TV shoots. Now, the first one we did was the Fuji X30, and the stability was excellent on it, but I did really struggle with it in the single operator mode. It just took too long to respond to any of my movements, so you really do want to fire up that app and tweak that a little bit. Speed up the dead band, and that's what's going to let the camera respond a little bit quicker to your movements. So make sure that you tweak that. But the ultimate test for it is we decided that we would do a single three minute unbroken shot walking through the camera store. Tons of movement and for that we had to use the second operator mode. Uh, we had Levi on the remote control, did a camera handoff and you can see it did an absolutely beautiful job considering the complexity of the shot. It does take a lot of rehearsal though. I kind of liken it to a three minute dance with different moves all the time. It takes a lot of rehearsal and a lot of muscle memory to do it properly. So for a person like me with only a couple hours experience using the Ronin, it's pretty spectacular what you can pull off with this device. All right, Jordan, so first mm. off, with our wrap up, any sort of things you didn't like about it? I mean, the big thing seems to be that classic DJI issue of like no support whatsoever. Yeah. It comes with a tiny little pamphlet when you buy it. And the weird thing is the out of the box settings aren't really optimal for many types of shooting. So you have to play oh. with this, but the documentation is so terrible that then you're on message boards and different uh, websites trying to find information to get it set it up to use properly. Though, it could be a drone that you're trying to make work. That's true. At least this thing can't crash into a <laughs> lake or something like that. You know, I, I don't have any complaints. I mean, I guess the only thing is at the start, I talked about how we were needing something for our TV show that was portable, light, right. you know, could do all these things. And it is getting there, but it is still a good chunk of weight. It I is. Mean, it's exhausting, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it would make a lot of sense for them to make two versions of this. Mm. One if you're just using DSLR, smaller mirrorless cameras, and then one for, you know, C300s, Epics, things like that. Right. 
Um, that would be the one thing. But I mean, yeah, it's heavy, but that doesn't have to be a detriment. You can find kind of a silver lining to that. Keep going. Don't stop until you're groaning. It's the groaning. That's right. Well, you've obviously found a way to mitigate the weight issue there. Yep. Um, Side so, business. <laughs> so what do we like about this thing? Because overall, I think it's a fantastic device, a fantastic package. Right? It works amazingly well once yeah. you get it set up for the type of shoot that you're doing. And what it's I really easy. like about it is, yeah, you buy one box. It comes in a giant, beautiful case. For sure. You get the stand with it. You get rods if you want to add a follow focus unit, a lens support. It comes everything you need all in one pack. They yeah. don't kind of nickel and dime you to get a whole bunch of extra pieces. What I'm impressed with, you know, we've had it now for a couple months and it has been reliable. Yes. Uh, it's well built. Yep. Everything fits nice. You're right. You get the case. Great value for the money. That's the other thing. I know there's going to be cheaper stuff coming on the market, yeah. but they're going to have to cut costs to do that. Whereas this, yep. it's a reasonable price. It's very, very nicely machined. Yeah. Everything yeah. seems well built. I've used some of those less expensive ones and they can work, but they always seem really finicky. Yeah. You know, just poorly built cables falling Funny out, things noises, like that. Things yeah. not well designed. Exactly. Yeah. This thing I feel is a completely reliable one and it feels like a professional tool. Uh, so I don't know. It's it's part of my kit now. I think. You yeah, know? I think you guys at home can expect a lot more uh, walk and talks and uh, one shot takes. Uh, yep. We we enjoy doing that. And thanks for joining us. The Ronin, a fantastic product. Check it out, and uh, we will see you guys soon. See you again. Subscribe and follow us on Twitter.